Hi, this is Tanya, and this is part three of 101 Things God Said About Your Healing. This is compiled, the verses of God are compiled by Dr. Keith Moore, morelifeministries.org. He didn't ask me to do this. And everything he gives is free. He has a word center, and you can go pick out an item, or probably request it by mail or on the internet, free. And so this is 101 verses he's put at the end of his book where he talks a lot about healing. So these have really ministered to me and made a great difference in my life and my husband's and others that we prayed for through the years when people didn't even know we're praying for and speaking these over them. And they apply to every area of your life, not just your bodily, physical healing. So I did want to bring up verse, well, not verse, but this is number 29 on Dr. Keith's list. It says, my joy is your strength, the merry heart doeth good, like a medicine. I can't remember if I put it in part two, but we're putting it in part three at the beginning. So that is Nehemiah 8.10 and Proverbs 17.22. Indeed, when we laugh, it's been physically proven by doctors. It's a physical and a physiological, not to mention a spiritual, emotional charge and healing. So people have even gotten healed and gotten out of the hospital by laughing. By just, I believe that the point in that is they're setting their mind on good things, positive things, and it creates healing in the body. The word says so. My joy is your strength, the merry heart doeth good like a medicine. Now, these are a copy of what's at the back of Dr. Key's book, but every one of these verses is in the Bible. I know that for sure. Any good preacher, and in fact, Dr. Keith tells this on himself, you need to check him out to make sure he's telling you the truth because you can read and you can write so you have the privilege to read the Bible for yourself and Bibles are so easy to come by in America praise the Lord and online so we really don't have an excuse we shouldn't just sit there and take what the preacher says we should check it out for ourselves in the word all right we are picking up with verse not verse number 49 on the list okay he says seek me and you shall live you're having trouble in your life things keep going wrong you need to seek the Lord and ask for his wisdom he is your father if you know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior if not get saved today get born again today just say Jesus I've done a lot of things wrong and I know you're a holy God and you love me you paid the price on the cross when you died for my sins I need you to please come into my heart forgive me of my sins come into my heart be my Lord and Savior and he will that's the greatest healing right there of your spirit. So let me stick to this, but check it out. Check me out for yourself in the Word. John 3, 16, John 3, 15 through 17, and many other places. All right, seek me and you shall live. Jesus truly is abundant life, John 10, 10. But this is Amos 5, 4, and 6. Right now we're still in the Old Testament. So the next one says, I have risen with healing in my wings. Malachi 4.2. That's the last book in the Old Testament, Malachi. Now we're going to verses, scriptures out of the New Testament. But we need both the Old Testament and the New Testament. So please don't let anyone tell you that we don't need the Old Testament. Yes, we do. There's a reason that we have both Testaments in the Bible. The Holy Bible, which, by the way, is the best-selling book of all time and always will be. All right. Here's... The next one I will be made clean I believe it was a leper that asked him and said to him Lord if you can you will make me clean and Jesus said I will be clean um, as you know lepers were people didn't touch them because they were so contagious Matthew 8 3 so God can use any one of these verses or any verse in the Bible to apply to your situation he opened my eyes one day because I've been rehearsing these for a few years off and on now it's daily he opened my eyes to see these will apply to every part of our lives every part of our lives needs to be healed not just our bodies so he will make us clean that includes our consciences that includes memories from the past he can do anything he's the one that cleanses us Jehovah Mekadishkum he's the one that heals us Jehovah Rapha it's many names, but there's one God. 
He's so multifaceted. That's one reason the angels, the seraphim, are forever going holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. According to our pastor and others, they see a new aspect of God's wisdom every time they fly around him. Wow, we just really have no idea how big our God is. But we know, if you can't remember anything else, like I've told my daughter and other people and even myself in those tough times, God is good and God is faithful. He is always working. He never sleeps nor slumbers. He never goes tired nor weary. He is awesome. I can only use that word for him. He is the awesome God. And he loves you and he wants you healed and whole in every arena of life. So you can apply these as he shows you or just get in the word, the Bible itself. He'll lead you by his spirit. By, like if you ask him, Lord, show me, I don't even have any clue, just open the Bible and say, Lord, show me what verse I need today. He'll do that. Just relax and see what comes up in your mind. He works with our minds and our hearts and our bodies and our lives in every arena if we let him. He's your best friend. He loves you. All right. It's amazing that we would ever doubt him or not believe him. He has done so much to prove his love for us. <laughs> Give us, Lord. Help us just to receive. Amen. I say we know and believe the love God has for us. Uh, preach that to myself and speak that over myself and my loved ones. You can do that too. It all comes down to knowing and believing God's love. He is love. I think that's 1 John 4, 8. So let's go on. He has made us clean. I took your infirmities. Matthew 8, 17. I bore your sicknesses. This is Jesus talking. Matthew 8, 17. He took all the junk at the cross and he broke the power of everything bad. There's a devil in the earth and the devil doesn't want us to know this, much less enjoy it. So we have to know the truth, which is in the Word of God and through the Spirit of God and choose to believe it and just convince ourselves with the help of God that he means what he says. It's like if your best friend or your husband or someone that you know really loves you kept telling you something that you refuse to believe it they can't help you much if you're just going to refuse to believe them so there's so many sermons that, so many ways we could go but let's stick to these verses if you're sick you need a physician I am the Lord your physician says Jesus Matthew 9 12 and Exodus 19 26 and again, I printed these off. It's easier to hold, and they're at the back of Dr. Keith's book in this nice format. I did expand the type a little bit and print them with some white space between them so it's easier reading for me and others I share copies with. All right, let's see. I move with compassion toward the sick, and I heal them. Matthew 14, 14. Healing is a mercy of God. He is mercy. He wants everyone healed. His plan was the Garden of Eden, where everything was quiet, peaceful, perfect, whole, no sickness, no disease, no curse, no devil, no, no hard toil, no stress, no fear, no anxiety. That was God's plan for us. Everything provided. And so when we get born again through our faith in the blood of what Jesus did for us on the cross, then we have the right to have the Garden, Eden, Garden of Eden, heaven on earth, in our lives again. We have to learn to agree with it, believe it, and learn how to overcome the enemy who's a thief and a robber and a liar and a bully, and agree with and receive and enjoy what our daddy God ordered and what Jesus paid for. It's worth the journey. Amen we have the victory so the more we believe God's Word and allow it to work in our hearts and our lives the more heaven on earth we do have hallelujah he's so good he is the restorer okay he is moved his compassion he's compassionate toward us and he changes not thus we are not consumed because God is holy 
He's holy, and we are not. But through our faith in the blood of Christ Jesus, we're acceptable to him and can approach him any time. He is holy, but he is love. And that love supersedes his holiness. His love, not supersedes really, but his love and his mercy are what sent Jesus so we could become acceptable to him. He wanted us, he created us to be his children, to be his family, to have perfect fellowship with him from the beginning in the garden where there was no lack of communication, no fear, only faith and love and good things. And then the devil got in because he hated us and he hated God and he messed it up. But that's okay. God is getting his people and his earth back. So, hallelujah. One more. Let's see. I heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. Matthew 4, 23. All right. And according to your faith, be it unto you. Matthew 9, 29. That goes back to what I was saying. If we don't, like if someone came up to you and you had heard he's a very kind man. Maybe he's a manager at a company you work for. And he said, you know what? I have a $5,000 check bonus I'm going to give all my employees just because we've made such a huge profit. You guys are doing such a great job. And so just come to the office and the secretary will give it to you. What if you said, I don't believe that. Why in the world would anybody do that? I don't think any of us have earned that. I don't think we're really that. I don't believe it. Okay, your check would just sit there and someone else may not get it, but you wouldn't get it. So we want everything that the blood of Jesus has bought for us. And I'm working on expanding my faith and receiving and claiming my rights to all the benefits of the covenant. Because if we believe in Jesus and we have received what he did for us on the cross, then we are right with God. And it's our right to enjoy everything Jesus paid for. He died a, the most gruesome death of all on the cross. He literally went to hell and went through hell and took the curse on himself. And I just He wants us to enjoy what he died for. So Lord, help us all. Thank you. And he is right now. Hallelujah. He gives us power and authority over all unclean spirits to cast them out and to heal all manner of sickness and all manner of disease. God's the same, demons are the same, and people are pretty much the same all through the ages. You can believe it or not believe it. It's your choice, but if you ask the Lord and say, Lord, this sounds so crazy, but I want to believe. He'll help you believe. Ask me how I know. I'm so thankful. His spirit prompted me to say, Lord, help me to believe. I believe so much more of the word now, and I've enjoyed so much better of a life now, and you can too. All right, that was Matthew 10, 1, and Luke 9, 1. I healed them all, Matthew 12, 15, and Hebrews 13, 8. It's Jesus' plan, and his blood paid for everyone to be healed. Did you know not everyone wants to be healed? That kind of shocked me a few years ago when I heard about some people from our church going to another country, and there's some people over there that are crippled and stuff and they, they make their living by begging. They don't want to be healed. It would upset their lifestyle, but there's I'm sure there's some like that in the United States. And so it's just a, we have to have our thinking changed and washed by the water of the word. So I'm so thankful for what he's taught me so far. And I look forward to learning much more and living a more heavenly life and helping other people do that. That's why I'm doing this. So may it work for you. Hallelujah. As many as touch me, Jesus said, are made perfectly whole. And as our pastor says, <clears throat> healing and everything else really comes out of our spirit. It has to come from our spirit first. It has to rise up from our heart, which is our spirit. Matthew 14, 36. Four more. Healing is the children's bread. Matthew 15, 26. We pray, give us this day our daily bread. Well, healing is part of what is ours every day. And it's God's plan for God's plan for us to walk in divine health and wholeness every day, in every arena. He paid for it. 
Jesus says, I do all things well. I make the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. That is Mark 7, 37. If you can believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Mark 9, 23, 11, 23, and 24. Amen. And the Lord spoke this to my heart when my husband and I last year, I think it was last fall, we, it was a goal of mine to go to a certain place in the mountains. It was a wonderful place, a, a place of ministry and prayer. And when I walked in the door, I was just like overwhelmed with the goodness of God because he'd helped me. I think he inspired me, inspired me with his goal and helped me to achieve it. And I said, well, thank you so much. And tears came, just thankful tears. And he said, if you can believe, all things are possible with God. Amen. So we do believe. We choose to believe. We take the emotion out of it and just choose to believe and be thankful and praise him. He is always working on your behalf. He loves you. Here's the last one for today. When hands are laid on you, you shall recover. As I've learned from our pastors and others, you can talk about the physical transference of the power of God by laying your hands on someone's body, even your own body, because it's really Jesus doing the healing, not us or any preacher or any minister. It's not any person but the person Jesus flowing through as a spirit of God, flowing through that willing vessel. But it can also mean the hand of the mouth. And our pastor taught us this and others have affirmed that. When we speak the words of God, which are spirit and life, John 6, 63, our words carry the power of God if our heart's right and we're in tune and it's the Spirit of God doing it, not just our flesh trying to make something happen, then that's a way of laying hands on people for healing. So may the words I've spoken, because I know the Lord inspired me to do this. I don't get any money from this. I'm doing this to help people and to share with them some of the things I've learned that have changed my life. So may these words of God spoken out of my mouth touch you and bring healing to your life. God bless. Have a great day.